Hey everybody, it's Jochen Heiden, and I'm back with the Locust Center vs. Desert Wolf campaign. It's January 5th, 1942. Oh, what is this? He's landing more troops at Midway. Okay, let's see what he's landing here. Okay, it's something substantial, right? Uh, there's a lot of squads on that, so he's bringing in reinforcements. Uh, but I'll tell you what, these, uh, cruisers that came in to support did inflict a fair amount of casualties on the six Marines. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, here, let me tell you what this is. The 53rd division is one of the, um, restricted home island divisions that are on the main, you know, the, the home islands. You can pay for these with political points, and that makes sense to me because that's the closest division to Midway. Uh, this is a 460, 450 AV division if it's intact. This is more than enough to finish this place off, but that's how it's going to go. Wow. He is not messing around with, with Midway now. This is maximum commitment. Oh, man. Bummer. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Well, this won't take long. A bunch of heavy cruisers versus a, a single uh, allied AKL. It's dead. <laughs> and a bombardment. Okay. So that task force came in here for a bombardment, and now he gets a little taste of what's there. Okay. I, I hope that signals that he's actually wanting to invade Horn Island, because that'd be great. I'd love to watch that. <gasps> Ooh. All right. Argonaut takes some hits. That's some of the uh, the task force loading unloading troops there. There's a lot of enemies. Oh, okay. Well, that ship was damaged anyway, retreating from Rangoon. And there you go. So what I was saying was, there's probably about five or six Allied subs at Midway, but I think most of them are going to be uh, Mark 14 equipped. So that means they're not going to hit much. Okay, Loka is landing at Rossell Island. Okay, and more amphibious unloading by the Japanese. Another ship takes damage, more unloading. Okay, again, more of the same. It's not looking good for Wake, I'll tell you that right now. Especially if he, like, bombards some more. Oh, there you go, Mark 14 again. You get a dead torpedo. Six hits to perch. Oh, this is interesting. This looks like a town class uh, light cruiser, British, with two four pipers, which are Clemsons, attacking uh, two fleet boats and two smaller destroyers. I got my money on this guy. The Glasgow. Yeah, that's a town class. So let's run this and see how this goes. My bet is these guys get jacked up. All right, so everybody trades some shells, but these guys take some hits. I thought it'd be even worse than that. Okay, and they're going back in again. All right, let's run it again. So here's the here's the the toll. These guys are hit pretty hard. Uh, this stuff doesn't look too bad. Hmm. 
So the Arashi is looking really bad, and the Harakaze as well. If we hear any sinking sounds, I'm guessing it's going to be these two right here. And a little more damage to these American Clemsons to Glasgow seems fine. Oof. All those subs and so many missed opportunities today. Mm. A lot of damage to S35. Oh. Oh. Okay, this is the bombardment then. And he's bringing in the battleships here. These are the Kido Butai escorts. Let's see what they can do. Whoa. Oh, man. That's not good, guys. Uh, that is a huge amount of casualties for the Wake Defenders. Uh, and this, they're going to be heavily disrupted. Unfortunately for the Japanese here, or I guess good for us, he's ripped up the base doing it. So when he gets on this island, there's going to be nothing left. It's a moonscape. Oh, and again, another one. Another one. Wow. Oh, shoot. Guys, so these this bombardment's happening during the daytime. You can see the result. Look at these losses. There's hardly anybody left alive on that island. Jeez, is that it? Another one. Another one. Wow. Golly. So <laughs> Midway Island is jacked. There's no way that we can't that the Japanese can't take it now. What is that? There's a destroyer in Sakhalin? What <laughs> what's this? Okay, a couple of jigs trying to take out the sands. Bombing from 6,000 feet, they're probably not going to hit much. Okay, so this is land-based air. So this is going to be your Nels and your Bettys. Oh, Boise! Boise? What's the Boise doing there? Hmm. Boise got lucky there. I'm surprised that he brought that out. I did not see that coming. So we have the Glasgow and the Boise and potentially something else up here. That's a lot. That's a major naval commitment. What was he looking to get? Okay, P-35s at Clark. Let's see what they end up doing. I think those P-35 shot something down. I saw some... I think I saw some of those, uh... Nades going down. Alright. Unescorted. Or maybe they're not. That might be long range cap. Okay. Couple, couple buddies shot down. I would not use Sonya's over Singapore. They just don't have the durability to survive that flak. <laughs> what? Okay, he's using Lilies on naval attack. I Ooh, Exeter. Whoa! Man, those are some big ships he's got in here today.
Okay, Lily's naval attack at 13,000 feet. Hmm. I wonder why they didn't hit anything. What is this? Hmm. I think that's bad form, man. I don't like this industry bombing in China. I don't like it. Okay, looks like we got some Dutch 139s coming out of Balak Poppin. They kill something. Oh man, the Hudsons are coming out to play. Oh, um, Singapore. Yeah, B-17s. Look at the level of the playing field at Kendari. Surprisingly little damage, though. I would have expected more. Again, minimal damage here. Okay. B-17s coming from, I'm guessing, Batavia. Uh, it do a little bit of damage on these guys, okay? And even more. Okay, this is some more land-based air coming out of Sin Kuang. Let's see what they can do. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, that's a third torpedo. Ah, that's not good. Oh, it's four. Man. There is absolutely no way the Glasgow is getting out of this today. That's, that's bad. Okay, round two. Typically with naval strike like this, naval attack, you get two chances per day. They fly more than once. Come on, hit that Boise. Come on. Oh. I mean, oh, don't hit the Boise. Yikes. What? What's that I'm on again? Okay, Betty's coming into Horn Island just to kind of feel things out. Just a little bit of hits there. Hmm. So by now, I think Loka has determined that Horn Island is a major... Allied Bastion. What he chooses to do with that information, though, I don't know. Is he going to go for it or just leave it alone? Okay, here we go. Um, this is another strike. This is a ground attack strike by... Kido Butai. More disruption added. So, uh, take a look. You notice that the Japanese took no losses. It's basically because all of the remaining anti-aircraft guns on Midway are either badly disrupted or dead from the bombardments earlier. Ooh, a little Chinese Air Force cap trap for you. This guy's coming to do his little industry bombing. And he got got. The yeah, Chinese Air Force putting up a good fight. And they completely prevented industry strike this turn.
Oh, okay, guys, look at this. This is an air attack on the Singapore Fortress. So what this is, is this is not an attack on the airfield any longer. This is him targeting the actual ground troops in Singapore. That's telling me that he's crossing this turn. He's trying to add some disruption to get these guys across better. He's going in. Oh, here come the lilies again. I doubt they hit anything. Yeah, swing and a miss. They're just way too high. 13,000 feet is worthless. Okay, the P-35s are going to try again. This time they don't really do much. Okay, second attempt today. Uh, my guess is this is going to be the Glasgow again. I would be shocked if it survived this. Ah! That's the fifth torpedo. Yeah, it's dead. It just sank. That's it. Man. I'm not entirely convinced that that was a good, good thing to do here. Like, what was the intention here? We'll have to try to deduce that when we go around the map, but this seems very costly for what you got. Okay, well, it, maybe this was a Desert Wolves attempt to... Oh, well, that's that's Japanese. That, it could be a transport sinking at um, Midway. Now that I think about it. Mm, our light subs deep and near the Yellow Sea. That, that would drive me insane if I was playing right now like this. Okay, he's still unloading at midway. A little less shore fire this time. It's like one gun left firing. I guess now we get to see what's up. There it is. They're okay, here we go. Shock attack at Singapore. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, five divisions of regiment, a couple tank units. All right, guys, what do you think? Is he going to do a good job here? Or is he going to get blasted? I feel like the Japanese are going to get blasted today. Well, let's find out. Hmm. Hmm. You know, that's actually not bad at all. Huh. This is actually not bad at all. I thought it, I thought this would go a lot worse for the Japanese. They definitely bested the allies here. Now, granted, they took a lot of disablements, but as you can see, a lot of vehicles lost, but... Um, the Allies lost more permanently destroyed stuff. These squads, that's 102 AV that will never come back again, okay? This action went a lot better for the Japanese than I anticipated. This, this is pretty good. 2600 AV, uh, I'm impressed. That's more than I thought that he would bring here. Uh, that's what, five divisions plus? In I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a little golf clap. This was not a bad showing for your first attack into Singapore with that much enemy AV with size 3 forts. This could have been a lot worse, for sure. This is very acceptable. Oh, and here we go. 
the shock attack at Midway Island. There's absolutely no way that they don't win this. Look at everything that the Allies have is completely disrupted and just jacked up from the bombing, from the bombardments, all that stuff. There's no way the Japanese don't win here. There you go. It's wow. command announced today that the ever victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Midway. I gotta say, I did not think that Lokasena would go all in with his chips here, but he did. And he was actually able to rescue this infantry regiment, which I thought was dead. But no, he doubled down, he tripled down, quadrupled down, whatever you want to call it, and just put a massive commitment into taking this place, and he did it. We'll talk more about it when I go around the map, but th this is a bit of a big moral victory for the Japanese. Not really much I can say about this stuff. Okay, so this unit here is actually cut off and surrounded. There's nowhere for them to go. Mm, okay, I take that back. There is somewhere for them to go. They have a retreat path back to Apari, assuming there's no Japanese troops there. Other than that, they, they can only retreat this way. You see that? You gotta connect the dots. So, they didn't surrender though. Wow, look at that, those casualties. Okay, Kendari. Hmm, I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen with this one. Yeah, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. They're gonna take Kendari. So, uh, there you go. The Japanese have just taken Kendari. This is a good turn for them. Now, do you see something here? Do you see how these troops retreated here? And they said they're going to Pare Pare? Well, that's right here. This is kind of a missed opportunity for Loka. He could have finished these troops by taking this base and this base. And what that does is it completely cuts off any retreat paths that they have, right? If he had just done that, I'm pretty certain that he... Well... I guess I could still get into here. You basically need to take this base, this base, and this base, or have troops there. But I like to try to do that whenever possible to deny these guys the ability to retreat. But it's not the end of the world. They're basically, you know, terminally damaged. Just never mind. Oh, hey, it's late. All right. I gotta say, guys, this was a darn fine turn for the Japanese. They had some big wins here today. We'll talk about it when we go around the map, but I'm pretty impressed. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look at this wild turn. A lot of stuff was happening here. I hope I don't forget some of it. Aircraft losses today. 16 for the Japanese, 2 for the Allies. Not so great for them. And our only two losses were a Dutch... Uh, one, uh, what are these things? A Buffalo? And a PPY. Uh, ship sunk this last turn. The at least one enemy destroyer. Uh, two light, light uh, cargo ships. And... 
the Glasgow confirmed sunk this turn. Army loss points did go up a fair amount this turn due to the loss of the troops on Midway. Now, let's talk about Midway. So, I did not expect this level of commitment by Loka. Although, the fact that Kido Butai has been hanging around this whole time probably should have signaled that he wasn't going to let this go. So, he landed the 53rd Division, I believe, and that's from the Home Islands. And that basically sealed the deal, along with three separate bombardment task forces, which is a huge commitment. So, tactically, he definitely won this battle. Strategically, I don't know if you can say that because what are his goals now? Like, what is he going to use this for? Was it worth the massive amount of fuel and ships that are now relocated here that are not somewhere else? This is the bulk of the, or not, maybe not the bulk, but at least I would say 50% of the battleships and heavy cruisers in the entire Imperial Japanese Navy are all concentrated here, which means they're not here or here. They're all here, and and all the all the fleet carriers basically are here. This is a huge expenditure for Midway, and I don't know if it was worth it. But he did manage to save the regiment. So I don't know what happens next with this. What is he intending to do with it? And I don't know what Desert Wolf's response is going to be, other than to continue to camp it out with subs, of which a few are actually damaged now. So this guy has some damage. Okay. Let's see who else. This guy has some damage. So two subs are damaged to the point where they need to go back for repairs. And that's Midway. In China, there's really nothing to speak about here. Uh, when I see something substantial happen, I'll report it. Right now, it's basically status quo. Burma. Uh, the Japanese are moving towards Tonggu, it looks like. And that is actually a concern... Actually, no, it's a, it's a, well, okay, maybe it's not. I was going to say it's a concern because it traps the troops down here, but we still have an exit path via Prome and the uh, Akiab Road here. So it, they, it keeps you from railing them out, but I think Desert Wolf already got into last year what he wanted to get in there. So that's not necessarily a huge issue. The rest of these troops can meander out this way when it's time. But the Burma Road is still open for now. Okay, so the Japanese have crossed into Singapore. And quite honestly, it was a bit more substantial than I had thought. He brought 2600 AV in there. And basically whittled away almost one-fifth of the combat power in Singapore. Knocked the fort down to uh, size 2. Of which we're already repairing it. But who knows how long that'll last. Um, and I don't think he was that badly damaged doing it. So I would say the situation in Singapore is a little more precarious than I initially thought it would be. My guess is it will take him at least a week and a half to two weeks at, with what he's got now of in-game time to take Singapore. But I've been wrong before on these, so we'll see. A huge surface raid on Sinkawang. To the point, I don't know exactly what the goal was here. Maybe it was to catch these ships. Maybe it was to just damage these, uh, what do you call them? The, um, destroyers. But it did cost us to Glasgow. The Edsel is damaged. The Barker is damaged. And the Exeter and the Boise are completely intact. But I, I don't know what he does at this point to get him out. Does he stick around? Or does he head back to somewhere like Batavia? I, I still don't entire. I wasn't paying attention to this area so much. I, I didn't really notice maybe what Desert Wolf noticed that would predicate such a large raid. But I think it's time to probably get out of here because the secret's out. There's going to be more aircraft coming next turn. Not much to say in the Philippines for now. We'll watch it. Okay. And Kendari failed this turn as well. Man. So the Japanese took Kendari. Uh, despite B-17s from Surabaya just plastering the place, they did manage to take it. So, these guys are now just kind of floating around. These guys are completely disorganized. And when they, when they say disorg like this, you can't give them any orders at all. You can't tell them to change modes. You can't tell them where to... Well, 
you can kind of try to tell him where to move, right? Let's see. Will he even let you move anywhere? Okay. I guess you can tell him to move somewhere, but how fast they're going to go is anybody's guess. This org is probably the worst state you can be in next to dead. So, what are we looking at? This January 6th, and he finally has the, the triangle, as I like to call it. Minato, Kendari, and Ambon. And this is really what you need to be able to continue to power project into uh, other places. So the next logical place to take would be Makassar. Potentially Kupong as well. But definitely Makassar, because Makassar is going to be your jumping off point into an invasion of Java from the, from the east. So let's see what he does. But the problem is for, for the Japanese here is that we do have enemy carriers here, right? So the uh, Lexington is here and it's in pretty good shape. So, and it's got a lot of fighters on board. <laughs> we even got some swordfish bombers on top of all that. So there's quite a bit of combat power on this ship. More than he's got aircraft wise. And if we look down here to the southern part of Australia, the Enterprise is on the way to join too. It's about, let's see, let's just do some math here. If we were going to go direct to meet up in Sir Bio, that is 81 hexes and they move eight hexes a day without having to refuel. We're at least 10 days away. Probably, let's call it 12. 12 if we had to stop for fuel. 12 days before the Enterprise gets there. And once those two join up, that is a substantial amount of power in this part of the Dutch East Indies that the Japanese are not going to be able to match right now. At least with seaborne carrier forces. So it's dangerous right now for the Japanese and the Dutch East Indies. And they're going to have to be very careful how they move through here with the constant threat of American carriers intervening. It's dangerous. I would not want to be in this situation. All right, and uh, other than the Japanese taking Lei in the Solomons, that's about all there is to talk about this turn. So definitely a fun one, a lot to see. Uh, now we'll see what happens after Midway. Catch you guys on the next one. Another one.